As I was working on my book, Life in Five Senses, I had hoped that exploring my senses might spark my creativity, and it sure did. For instance, I discovered that we can use our hands to help our minds to think. Here's an example. For years, on my computer, I kept a list of my indirect directions, short, somewhat mysterious creative prompts that I consulted whenever I felt stuck, like skip the boring parts and break the frame. I loved these indirect directions, but it bothered me that this was just a document that could vanish or be forgotten. When I was home visiting my parents, I came across my father's ancient Rolodex. I loved it. And it hit me. I could buy a new Rolodex for my creative prompts to choose at random whenever I felt stuck. I copied my indirect directions onto the cards. First task, I needed a better name for this tool, which I was calling by the boring name of Rolodex of Ideas. At random, I pulled out a card, find a fresh metaphor. After a few weeks of thinking, I was inspired. Muse machine. Putting an idea in my hands helped put an idea in my head. One of the most important things I learned from writing Life in Five Senses was how I could turn to my senses to help me to draw closer to the people I loved. What's familiar is easy to ignore, and I realized that for a long time, I'd been making a mistake in my marriage. I'd been looking at my husband, Jamie, without seeing him. I started to pay much closer attention. For instance, for several mornings in a row, as I made my morning coffee, I'd picked up a peanut butter covered spoon and rinsed it off. It was only on the fourth morning that I thought to ask Jamie, have you been having trouble sleeping? A spoonful of peanut butter is his favorite midnight snack but I hadn't noticed this clue sitting on the kitchen counter. I saw the spoon without seeing it. When I knew to ask the question, Jamie told me that a difficult problem was keeping him awake. Looking harder at the outer Jamie gave me an insight into the inner Jamie. I don't want the people most important to me to fade into the background wallpaper of my existence. Sharpening my sight sharpened my appreciation of the people I love most. One fun thing about writing Life in Five Senses was that I became much more aware of how I could turn to my senses for pure delight. When it comes to taste, people love taste-related activities such as cooking, exploring farmers markets, and trying new restaurants. For me, however, taste was a somewhat neglected sense. I ate the same foods most days and didn't pay much attention to what I put in my mouth. I wanted to tap into the power of taste for the fun of it. I decided to throw a tastes party where my friends and I could compare different tastes. We rated varieties of foods like apples and potato chips. I had my friends try a mystery drink, which was Red Bull. We tasted ketchup to see if we could detect the five basic tastes of sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. We reminisced about the candy and junk food we ate as kids. Doing these taste tests was tremendously fun. My friends and I weren't just socializing, we were sharing a sensory experience, and it got us all laughing and talking. One secret to getting more fun out of life is to tune in to our five senses. Each of our five senses ties us to memories. One thing about me is that I don't have a good memory for my own past, so I'm always trying to find new ways to evoke memories. I decided to use my sense of taste to connect me with my own memories by writing a tastes timeline. I divided my life into four epics and asked myself, what tastes do I remember best from that time? For childhood, it was items like my father's Swedish pancakes, for law school, diet peach snapple, for my daughter's childhoods, Cheerios. Even more fun, I called my sister Elizabeth to reminisce. We talked about what we ate on long car trips and when we visited our grandparents. Asking myself, what tastes do I remember from a particular time helped me to dredge up memories I hadn't thought about for years. I didn't even need to track down these items to eat them. Just recalling their tastes 
was enough. My study of my five senses gave me new insights into my own nature. Take my relationship to music. Music is an ancient, universal source of human pleasure, but I didn't have much of an ear for music. I thought of this as a personal limitation. But when a friend said, I do think you appreciate music, just in your own way, instead of belittling my response to music, I tried to understand it. What was different about me? Many people like to listen to new music, or an entire genre of music, or to all the music of their favorite artists. Not me. I love specific songs. If I hear a song I love, I'll listen to it over and over, but I don't follow up to listen to other music by that particular artist or in that genre. My way of loving music didn't feel like the right way. But there's no right way or wrong way to get more pleasure from music. I didn't need to change. I needed to accept my song by song way of loving music. Once I embraced my way of listening, I started enjoying music and my sense of hearing far more. Be Gretchen. One of the most useful things I learned from writing Life in Five Senses was how we can help ourselves feel more calm and less stressed by turning to the sense of touch. Little kids have their special toys that they hang on to for comfort and reassurance. Here's Coco, my favorite childhood toy. These days, we're familiar with items like pop toys, calm strips, and fidget spinners. And I discovered that without quite realizing it, I'd found a way to use my sense of touch to calm down. When I'm in a situation that makes me anxious, like being backstage before giving a big talk or walking into a party where I don't know anyone, I hold a pen. I don't have any paper, and if I needed to take a note, I could use my phone, but holding a pen makes me feel grounded. When I asked around, I discovered that many people used props to help them manage anxiety. People use things like a mug, a clipboard, a water bottle full of ice water. Sometimes we can minister to the spirit through the body. Through the sense of touch, we can calm our minds.